Hello and welcome to the next episode of my Learn With Me Op6 series. So, so far we've had a basic overview of the device, we've looked at some basic FM sounds as well as the details of the operators, their modes and their waveforms. We've designed a few FM sounds, but I haven't gone in depth with FM sound design, mostly because I have a separate video series which uses the Liven XFM to demonstrate and teach FM synthesis. Even though that is not this synthesizer, everything I teach there is applicable. So having done that, I decided to move on to non-FM, and I think the non-FM sounds are really what differentiate this synthesizer from a lot of its FM-only counterparts. What I've explored is subtractive synthesis, additive synthesis, amplitude modulation or AM synthesis. What I'm going to look at today is using the comb filter. So first, what is a comb filter? Well, a comb filter is a type of delay device which introduces a delayed copy of signal back into itself. So my, why might you want to do this? Well, what a comb filter does is it removes certain frequency bands. Unlike a high pass or a low pass filter, which remove everything above or below a certain band, a comb filter removes and leaves frequencies in a sort of harmonic pattern. One of the things that's quite interesting about comb filtering is firstly the sound it gives. It sounds a bit like a, a phaser when you have a moving comb filter, so that's an effect that you can go for. Another thing is when it's fed back into itself, that's how resonance functions in a filter, it doesn't only sound at one particular frequency, but it sounds across all of the bands which it is passing. So that can give you a much more characterful and interesting resonance. And in fact, that is analogous to a form of resonance in a physical acoustic device. So sometimes they called or they form part of what are called modal resonators. So I think that's what I'm really going to try and explore here today. So let me get an initialized patch. Uh, let's go to user algorithm. Let's turn that down. So what I'm thinking here is in the first case, I'm going to set operator one to be our comb filter, which will act as a resonator. And operator two is going to be the sound which excites that resonator. So you may have heard of the concept of pinging a filter. This is very much like pinging a filter. So let's go in and let's send some of operator two to operator one. So now we have a signal being sent over and now let's look at operator one. So we want it to go to effects mode and comb filter. So what parameters have we got? We have the usual mix level. So when this is at zero, only the incoming audio comes through and is processed through the comb filter. When this is maximum, the incoming signal and an internal oscillator as part of this operator is also added. Initially, we're not going to use that. Frequency, now this is the interesting part. The frequency note is referred to as plus or minus semitones. So what does that mean? It means that the comb filter is going to track the pitch of the key that we play. So this means that instead of having a fixed comb filter, the frequencies are going to move up and down. So if I try and play, what's gonna happen? Nothing's going to happen at the moment because we don't really have anything to excite the filter. So remember, consider this a resonator. So unless we resonate, unless we hit it, unless we put energy into it, it's not going to resonate. So let's bring up operator two. So the sound's just passing through, well why? The comb filter is going to allow the frequency that it is tuned to through and then harmonics through. So we're only sending in a sine wave. So the sine wave simply passes through this filter unaltered. Typically, we don't only want to excite one of the bands, we want to excite all of the bands. How do we excite all of the bands? By sending in a broadband signal. So the archetypal broadband signal would be noise. Um, I'm gonna go for pink noise here. So. Remember that pink noise is not a tuned noise, so if we just listen to this operator on its own without using the comb filter, this will be a burst of noise. There will be no... We won't be able to play it, it's not pitched. 
but notice it already sounds pitched. Why does it sound pitched? The comb filter. The comb filter is key tracking. But we don't actually need to have the noise going in continuously. What we can do is we can send in a little pulse of noise. Let's say 20 milliseconds worth of pulse or 30 milliseconds worth of pulse. Let's set the release to 30 milliseconds too. So I could believe that that's just 30 milliseconds worth of sound. Why is it only 30 milliseconds of sound? Well, that comes back to what I mentioned about feedback and resonance. So the comb filter at the moment has feedback and the feedback is at 50%, meaning that the signal comes in, it gets mixed, and then the result of that mixing gets fed back in at 50% the original level. If I set this to 100%, this is going to... It would continue resonating, but I have an envelope that's controlling it here. So let's... Let's open that up. And we're already there, right? We already have what to me sounds like a plucked string sound. Pretty interesting. I think now though, we're going to figure out how are we gonna shape that sound? How are we going to make that sound the way we would like it to? And one thing we can experiment with is what happens if we mix in a bit of the actual oscillator sound itself? So let's say the oscillator is um, on pitch. So because the feedback is so high, we're really getting a lot of... Let's reduce the... Let's try shaping this as a decay envelope, but along the decay envelope. So let's make it 15 seconds long. Okay. So let's hop back. A um, bit more feedback. So this is without the oscillator that's part of operator one sounding, and we're relying fully on the noise to give us that resonance. So I think one thing which might be good here is what if velocity impacted the amount of feedback? So at low velocity, we only have a little feedback. So let's say keyboard velocity to operator one and there's a lot of things to go through for this. Um, I miss it, no, comb filter feedback. So let's... It's already sounding more interesting. It sounds very high-pitched to me, so I, what I might do is also try and sounding quite interesting there. Let's consider also that this second operator is what's exciting the model. So let's make that velocity sensitive so we put less excitation into the model at lower velocity and more excitation at higher velocity. So level velocity sensitivity. So I'm bringing back in that small amount of the oscillator itself. Let's 
see how it sounds in high register. I think we could do with filtering some of that out. So let's get a filter. Let's give it quite a long shape because we don't really want it to be cutting very much out here. And now let's dial it back in the high frequency. experiment a little bit with what the excitation is. So the excitation here that I've put in is this small pulse of noise. What happens if I make that longer then? So it's sounding more like a bowed string. So rather than it hit a struck string, sort of dulcimer sound. This is more like a violin. So let's extend out that decay. Let's bring this up. Sounding pretty interesting. Let's try different waveforms. So what if I put sine in? So since putting uh, the comb filter will only be excited by the signal that's in there, if I send in only a single band, then only that band will be excited. So we get a standard resonance, just like a normal resonant filter. As we add more harmonics, So the white noise is very slightly brighter than the pink noise. And when the blue noise is in, the blue noise is in the higher frequency. So we hear more of the oscillator from operator one ringing through. So an interesting thing to think about here is this is only using two operators. So for example, if I wanted to, I could bring in another, maybe three similar plucked voices with kind of different shapes. So I could, for example, have three of these string type sounds, maybe excited by different types of noise, all overlaid on one another, all with different shapes. For now, I'm gonna pull this back to something more like I was originally using.
interesting. So I could imagine using this as an accent in another sound. So you may remember if you watched my FM series that often I would use an operator to give me a sound like a hammer noise or some other strike noise, some percussive element. I think this could function quite well as such a percussive element. Note also that I haven't actually put any effects in place here. Um, also, let's experiment with this. So already only two operators, a pretty interesting pad sound, but let's add some effects. Let's go for an ensemble, a big ensemble. Let's add um, let's go for a tape echo. And wouldn't be complete without a reverb. Let's go a little crazy with the reverb. Um, clear, very bright tone, very long time. Let's just go for it. So this was a little unstructured, but I think it was an interesting demonstration of what we can do with a small number of operators and how a comb filter can give us with a relatively simple setup, an interesting sound and the potential to do interesting modifications on sounds. That's to say, by sending sounds through other sounds. An example of this type of, type of modal resonator is um, rings, the Eurorack module. So things that you could do with that, yes, we don't have an external audio input, but we could place this at the end of a chain where we generated a complex sound and then we use the modal resonator to shape that sound. Or we could send the sound to two different modal resonators tuned differently and have sounds coming out in parallel. So I think, there are a lot of possibilities here. I think I would like to explore one or two other non-FM synthesis methods. So that will probably be my next couple of episodes. And then after that, my thinking is to try and bring together, in some sense, all of these different synthesis methods that I've demonstrated into some coherent whole. And also note that I haven't really done very much with the LFOs and haven't done very much with the envelopes. So maybe when I bring everything together, I'm going to spend a little longer and I'm going to make a sound which is much deeper. Most likely that will take longer than I would like to spend in a single video. So it may even be the case that I do part of the sound design, save the sound and come back. In any case, um, I hope that's given you a flavor of what's to come. I hope you enjoyed this episode and have been enjoying the series. And most importantly, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.